Where are we going? Mount St. Helens. Why? Because uh, it's a family outing. <laughs> what city are we in now? Washington yeah, at the border. The, we're not really near the border, but then we're um, where you at the lower part. Washington. Oh, yeah, we're still in Washington. My teacher told us that we were right here. Okay, no, I, I want to like, combine different genres of video almost. Like, like what I want to try and do is mush like a, a travel vlog with a build video. Like, like what would that be? Like, like, could you even do that and make something that was interesting to watch? Okay, down. So we're getting closer to Mount St. Helens. So we're getting really close. I'm hoping I'm not, I'm in the frame, but not covering up the mountain like the last time. So um, what, what do you think about the view? Um, <laughs> nice. It's nice. That, that's it, it's nice. This is one of the coolest things on the planet and it's nice. <laughs> Like how would you combine a, a photograph and a terrain, or, or, or different views of a place? Like if you could take a terrain and a photograph and put them together, what, what would that be? So what this really comes down to is I wanted to carve something on the CNC machine. And making a terrain was an easy way to do that. So I made a model of Mount St. Helens, and I'll put a link down below to a good Make Magazine article about finding all of the resources for doing this. And I picked out a photo that I had taken on our trip to use as the base to make the volume to carve the terrain out of. I divided the photograph into sections and made it into five pieces that would sort of make a, a real rough abstraction of the photograph. And I could build my, my block of wood to be carved based on that abstraction and based on that photograph. So it was basically a series of edges and then the mountain and the horizon or the line between the, the mountain and the sky. I put in a fake sky. It didn't look like this the day we were there. Now to make the actual piece, I wondered about what wood to use, and I have all these stacks of little milled up projects that I've done where I've gotten sort of a, a small piece of wood, not a big log, but like a branch, or a piece that I might have turned into a bowl, but I ended up milling it up into slabs. So I have all these stacks of, of different kinds of wood and it, it seemed like a good time to just start using some of this. It's been sitting around for a while and it's time to just get it out of the way. So I have two different kinds of walnut and I had some cherry that I ended up not using. I'll find something else to use that for. The, the color didn't quite seem like it went with the other stuff. And I have some pieces that I thought were ginkgo but I think they might be some of the plum that I got a few years ago. So I picked out roughly what I wanted to use. And I started by getting a, a flat face and a flat edge so that I could run those through the table saw somewhat safely. <laughs> so I ran a few through the table saw and it, it worked for a bit. Then I was running into a few that were getting really tough to push through, and I think there was just a lot of stress in the wood. So I moved over to the bandsaw to cut the initial strips. As the bandsaw doesn't care so much how much stress there is in the wood, there, there's not a whole lot of blade for it to pinch. So it's good for this kind of work. So I could give myself an edge, and then once I had an edge, I could run it against a fence and get my strips. And once I had the rough strips on the bandsaw, I could rejoint and then run them through the table saw to get a, a smoother and a more accurate width. And once I had the strips pretty close, I needed to take care of all the ends, and they were all different. Truing up the ends, but also finding the places within the strips where there were defects in the wood. Like there were places where there were knots, there were places where it had cracked. So there was a lot of 
cutting the strips into the, the blocks that I needed to make the glue ups, to make the surfaces, to make the photo, to then carve the terrain. If that makes sense. <laughs> It was a little bit like doing a segmented bowl where I was making a whole bunch of segments to glue up into a larger piece to then be carved into something else. So on our little road trip, we ended up at the Johnson Ridge Observatory, which is the viewing spot on the western side of the mountain. And the photo I took wasn't right at the end or right at the top, but it's pretty much the view that you get from that, from that general area. And it, it's sort of the famous, well-known view of the mountain. Because I think this is the more heavily visited side as it's closer to I-5. So now that I have my segments ready, I can start to glue them up. And I found that I could glue a few together, clamp them, let that set up for 20 minutes or so, then glue another set on and let that sit for 20 minutes or so and, and continue in that process to get the whole shape that I needed. So in gluing these, I was making a rough approximation of the different parts that I needed for the image. And to figure that out, I drew a full-size drawing of the abstraction that I had made. So I, I shoved a pen into the, into the router spindle and just did the drawing. And that, that actually worked okay. <laughs> so what that gave me were patterns that I could follow for each of the parts. So I could make my piece big enough to cover it all and make some tabs here and there to hold the piece down to the table when it came time to cut it with the, with the CNC. I think this is the piece of plum that I had. Now once I had the four ground pieces made, I needed to make the sky, which was about half the area that I needed for the image. So I made that out of maple. I wanted something without a whole lot of green and fairly light. So I'd have a, a darker ground and a lighter sky. And I laid those out. And the one thing that I wanted to do with these was to have the pieces near the ground be lighter and the pieces further up in the image get darker and darker. So it would be like the way that the sky does that. So I glued that all up. So you can see how the sky is, is light at the horizon and then it gets darker as it, as it moves up. And the kids had been asking about Mount St. Helens, as you hear about it here in the Northwest quite a bit. So it was good to go and see it and show them what it's all about. So all these pieces that I've been gluing up now have to be cut so that they'll fit together. Now I did this by setting a single zero zero point then cutting each piece relative to that same zero, zero point. So they would all fall in the location that they fall in the final piece. So I cut the first piece, then I could trace the outline that I had cut, and that would tell me where to put the second piece on the table. So it would be cut in the location that it's gonna be. But this would allow me to put it down where I knew I was gonna be getting wood where I needed it. And I can sand off the bridges that I used. Now this is the sky getting cut. So all the pieces can go together now. And I really kept it very simple. It's just the five pieces of wood. But you can kind of see the photograph in it. And then one big easy glue up to put all these together. Now we did do a short hike when we were up there and we got beyond the pavement, which was good. <laughs> now I can put this piece back on the machine and my holes that I had for the screws on the individual parts fell in the same place 
once they were glued up into one big piece. So I could use the same holes in the table to screw the piece down, which meant that it was in the same location as well. Now I flattened it, and then I started to carve the terrain into this layer. So this is the first layer of the build, vertically. And I'll carve into this first layer with two passes. And once I do that, I can then mark where there are still flat spots. And where there are still flat spots, I need to build a second layer to get glued to this layer. So I need to go through the whole process again of making the parts to make the image again. But I took a little bit of a shortcut because I knew that I didn't need an entire second level. I only needed the second, the second layer in certain areas, like where the mountain is, obviously. And then there was a little spot on the lower left that I needed some more height. So I glued up a, a second set of pieces. And these got smaller and simpler. In fact, they were small enough that I could flatten the bottom on the jointer once they were glued up. Now where the mountain is, the pieces are cut through the middle with the horizon. So the bottom is the ground and the top is the sky. So I had to cut the two halves of the piece for the mountain so that they would fit together. And I used the same patterns as I did on the first layer. So I had a lot of area where the router was just cutting air but it kept it clear in my head what I was doing and how things were gonna to fit together by doing it this way. And with my marks on the table, I could line everything up really easily. And I can cut the bridges I was using off. So this cuts really easily. There's almost no wood to be cut, but I have to be careful not to cut the piece that I want so I don't damage that seam and I can sand that joint just a little bit. And I can glue that onto the first layer. And the thing that was tricky was to make sure that seam was right above the seam from below. But that was just a matter of lining it up as I was gluing it. And this one in the corner didn't matter so much. It just had to cover where it was flat. Once that's set, I can take my clamps off. <laughs> and I can carve the second layer. So the carving I've been doing so far is just a roughing pass. So I'm using a, a big half inch bit and just letting it remove most of the material but not worrying so much about the surface. Now I got to the end of the second layer and the piece broke off. I was starting to see that I shouldn't leave so much extra material on these secondary levels as they're just extra for the router to carve off, but they also, if they get long enough, they can have enough leverage on them to actually break the piece free, which is what happened. So I carved off the extra bit and then re-glued this piece back down again. And I used the CNC as a clamp to just hold it down worked pretty well. So ju just a little bit of pressure. I don't want to break the machine. I just want to hold it in place. Now there's a third level right where the mountaintop is. So I had to make a little piece that was again two pieces seen together because part of it was the sky and part of it was the ground. So doing the whole process again with just two little very simple pieces. So it went pretty quickly and a lot of cutting nothing. <laughs> Then this can get glued down. Now I remembered from the last layer, I can cut off the bit that I don't really need with the bandsaw. It's sort of easier to, to cut off the bit with a bandsaw than to have the, the router plow through it and, and just dull itself on stuff that doesn't really need to be there. I guess with these upper levels, I'm not attaching them with screws, so I don't need any of the extra tabs or the, the extra length on any of the segments. So I can really cut it as close as I can to the, to the flat spot. Then these can be brought back over to the setup. <laughs> okay, and then 
I can glue this down. I think with this one, I glued the two pieces together first. Then I glued it down to the, to the work piece. And again, I used the CNC to hold it in place, sort of clamp it. I could see this working for gluing rings together for segmented turning. And I do the rough pass on this final piece and finally start to see the, the shape of the mountain. Then it was time to do the finish pass. Now I have a, a quarter inch round over bit to do this. And I think I set the step overs at 16th of an inch. So it was making a lot of passes. To do the whole piece took two and a half hours. Now I got a long carving bit because I thought that would be necessary. But I don't think I'd really needed this much length and it kind of chattered a lot or it squealed. I, I think it's, it's vibrating because it's so long. It worked fine, it was just loud and made a horrible noise. <laughs> and I think this was the end of the hike that we did. Now once I had the finish pass done, there were still a few little fuzzy spots. I was playing around with different speeds, different spindle speeds and different feed rates and I, I couldn't get it to, to really vary that much as far as the cut quality. For the, for the most part it was pretty good, but there were just a few spots where it was fuzzy. So I sanded, I sanded those spots and then I just ended up sanding the whole thing. Now I wondered too about leaving the sides on as they were actually kind of cool. but I had always kind of figured I would cut those off and that's what I ended up doing in the end. And just made it a, a clean square. And then I can put finish on. And this is one of those projects that kind of looked sort of eh until the finish went on and then it, the, all the wood popped and it was really amazing. The wood's just so gorgeous and it's really nice with the kind of blobby curvy shape of the terrain carved into it. So if I can be a little bit of a critic, it's one of those projects where I really like the idea. I like the idea of trying to push two different views of a place together, just shoving them on top of each other when they really don't have anything to do with each other except for the subject. So taking a photo and a terrain model and seeing what happens when you just push them together. But the actual result was actually, I think, a little better than I thought it would be. But there are still some things I think I would do differently. I think the way the different height layers went together and carving them at such a low angle, that seam doesn't look all that good. And making the piece out of all the little segments ended up making it... It's not so much that it's busy, but it's again, the, the different layers don't match up. So it looks kind of haphazard and sloppy. Like I wonder about doing something like this where each section is out of a solid monolithic piece of wood. I don't know whether that would be better, but it would, it would definitely be different. And it might make the image clearer. But this was definitely a good experiment, and I, I figured out a lot of things. And I have a whole bunch of ideas now for similar projects. <laughs>